So when you go to live concert halls, it's that's th th there's some magic magic to it. But do you think that ranking system makes sense for art? I'm very determined with the um, music that I play. What I want to do, what what I want to express. Your mental health and emotional well-being play a huge part in communicating um, an artistic message. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode five of Artist Confidential with your host Esther Yu. As you can see, we are filming a very special episode today. This is the first episode of the series that we are filming in person. And I'm delighted that the first guest that I'm speaking to face to face for this series is the brilliant pianist Ye Guan Sanu. Among his many accomplishments, he was the gold medalist at the Clyburn Piano Competition, and he was also the very first ever Korean person to do so. And in 2020, he released his debut album on the prestigious label Decca. On a personal note, he and I have recently started collaborating together, and we are looking forward to performing our first recital together at Wigmore Hall this fall. I am so grateful that he made time to be with us today. Welcome, Ye Guan. Oh, thank you. I'm, it's such a pleasure to be here. You're the first guest I get to uh, speak with live and in yeah, person, that, so that, it's that, quite that, exciting. That's an honor also yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> You live in Berlin, mostly. Yes. And uh, is that where you spent the most of the pandemic? I know you were also in Seoul, where we are now, and performed here as yes, well. Yes, in the beginning, so 2020, uh, February, I was in San Francisco for about three and a half weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and during that time, you know, in Asia, uh, things were uh, not looking good. And I was hoping uh, the situation will get better somehow. Mm -hmm. But um, when I was coming back to Berlin at the end of February, then, you know, things, uh, lots of concerts in March, yeah. um, have been getting uh, canceled and postponed. So I, I was in a very depressed and um, kind of gloomy mood. There were a few months that I didn't even play for the piano. And then after a few months, um, of course I had the recording projects right. coming up and uh, the date was fortunately set up in the, the nearest future. So um, then I was getting back on track to really focus myself and uh, but I think after two months not be really touching the piano that got me more focused somehow uh, mm -hmm. into what I had to do and what I work on any music mm -hmm. than really getting uh, deeper into yeah. it. Yeah, so. yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> so you mentioned your album and obviously this was a very important project for you. I think it's your debut album on the Decca label. I presume it was also a source of light and hope for you, especially during the pandemic. What does it mean to you to record an album? Because many people now listen to music through their phones or computer and through st streaming um, platforms. And more and more so, the shorter tracks are becoming very popular, shorter single right. releases um, rather than longer, fuller form albums. And um, yes, many people say that the CD album is kind of a dying art form. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I mean, to me personally, it has great significance because in my childhood, my parents had um, many, many albums at home, and I grew up, you know, touching the Deutsche Grammophon CDs of Anne Sophie Mutter, and you know, really great musicians that I admired. And it was my dream since then to record mm -hmm. an album, hopefully for such labels. Um, what does it mean to you, and what do you say about the value and significance of the physical? CD, both as an artist and also as a consumer yourself? First of all, I feel a bit guilty, you know, because I also, listening to music on online or, you know, through streaming, mm -hmm. uh, it's easily accessible when, when you're traveling, especially, you, you, you don't 
you cannot be going to the st uh, um, mm -hmm. store in person to buy copies of the CD, and, and also you, when you're traveling, you don't have a speaker, or like I don't even have a laptop uh, when I travel with. So I, it's it's not easily accessible to listen to some some recordings when you want to, um, and also I don't own that many uh, physical copies, but. Mm -hmm. I, I think with the physical copies, uh, the importance and, and the b value is um, very high because when you have certain physical copy, uh, physical album, you have this personal relationship with the recording and also with the artist uh, you like, you admire, mm -hmm. or the, with, the, with the music, with the composer that uh, you like. And, and with that relationship, you, it, I think that enhances your listening uh, experience even more, I think. So when there are some artists that I love, then I try to get the physical copies of them um, if I can. And um, I think that experience just makes you feel like you're almost um, in a concert hall. Um, of course, when you go to live concert halls, it's uh, that's th th there's some magic, magic to it. And uh, you it's something you cannot describe with words and even though there are you know because it, it you can have uh, 2,000 people inside but every individual person there they go through their personal very personal journey so of course the f recording cannot be compared to live concert halls but having a physical copy and listening to that um, recording, um, I think that can almost match similar kind of personal relationship and, and feeling, um, just like the concert, live right. concert. Um. In terms of trying out many different projects and creative mm -hmm. um, outlets, and also collaborating with a diverse range of people, because I think um, in some, some cultures or some perceptions, um, when I was on the path to becoming a soloist, I was often advised to focus on my solo repertoire. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, um, musicians who are aiming to be soloists are encouraged to focus only on that. And then things like playing in your school orchestra or performing chamber music is considered secondary. And then projects that step even just a little bit outside of the classical realm is often, there's, it can be interpreted yeah. Yeah. badly sometimes, which is also why I think we as soloists have a reservation about, uh, should I do this or not? But from my experience, I've done many different types of projects now. And even the ones I wasn't so sure about, ultimately, I'm really glad I did them because I think I learned so much from those experiences that I would never get from just being at home practicing myself or just playing the big concertos. Mm -hmm. And everything that I do outside of my work as a soloist, it all integrates into who I am as a musician and helps me grow into a more complete person and a more complete artist. I mean, I imagine you have that sense of, I'm curious for you, you know, what is the meaning or what is the purpose of going out there, putting yourself out there and trying these diverse projects and working with with new people as long as I'm not looking at things or looking at the music um, with the sh shallow view or, or thinking uh, not putting all my efforts then then it's a problem but I th I'm very determined with the um, music that I play uh, what I want to do and what what I want to express so um, trying out new things I think it will only I can benefit from doing that and, and, and getting more motivation, but mm -hmm. not making me feel something, any type of genre is less important. Mm -hmm. um, because 
I mean, Chopin was is considered as a, as a popular composer, and that doesn't mean it's you know cheap or um, it's any lesser imp uh, important yes. composer. Mm -hmm. um, but it's more universal. So mm -hmm. um, I think it's as long as you have this faith in music, and, and when you work on certain projects, you put all your energy and and being more sincere to the project that I think that's that's more important mm -hmm. than um, thinking too much right yeah I don't even know what I'm saying but <laughs> yeah just yeah yeah I think that's right I think um, early on in our career I think we a lot of people uh, I know I did this <laughs> but I think we try to for example for programming try to program things that are right <laughs> or that are that we think will be more accepted. Mm -hmm. But I think as artists, it really should be more about our expression mm -hmm. and what we feel like we want to express and what we can express the best at that moment in our lives. And I think with experience, you kind of learn that mm -hmm. process and there's n no really right <laughs> way of of programming or of choosing projects, I think it's very much the individual's choice. Um, right. And I hope we move more in that direction. You have received music education in Korea, in the US, and also in Europe. So you've been exposed to all of these three different cultures and music education systems. And I myself have had experience with these, but I think you've been in these systems much more in depth than I have. I'm curious what your experience was and what are the aspects that you love the most from each or some aspects that were less helpful for you? So I started uh, playing the piano when I was eight, then 15 I went to the US. I was in the US for 11 years. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to Curtis Juilliard and Menace. Then I moved to Germany. I was uh, I studied at uh, Hanover. Uh, still, actually, technically, I'm a student there. Um, <laughs> and I worked with um, Seymour Lipkin, um, Robert McDonald, Richard Good. Uh, then in Germany with uh, uh, Bernd Gutzke mm -hmm. for about almost three years, I think. Um, but after Clyburn competition, uh, for that first and second year, I quite worked with him quite um, closely. I, whenever I had a chance to go uh, play for him, I went and stayed a few days and played um, different repertoire. And I, I'm really thankful to have such wonderful teachers that I worked with and um, in Korea, I um, worked with the two, uh, mainly uh, two teachers, uh, uh, Kim, Kim Sona Sundeim and uh, Shin Minja Sundeim. And I think the difference will be in Korea, I was, I was a really shy person and I didn't express anything uh, with words and also, expression-wise, I, I think I just didn't smile much. Mm. And um, some some teacher, when I was in a car kindergarten, she she I think she had told my mother that um, she thinks I'm what do you call that? That the a kid who cannot speak mute. Uh, yeah, 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 oh. mute. Um, so I I just could could not speak out. But when I was told to do something, I I, I was a good quite I, I think quite good student uh, following the rules, uh, the, the order and rules. I would say the system in Korea, personally what I had was somewhat more disciplined mm. and systematic. Um, then I, when I went to the US, I was quite confused and I was not sure what to do. Um, uh, with the teacher that I worked with, he was already about 80 years old um, when I first went to study with him. And he would not 
tell me what to do, you know, dynamic mm -hmm. wise or how to phrase things like that. Um, I would play through some piece, and then he will give me just basic um, comments uh, about how to treat each composer differently and and how to capture the character. And uh, but but he was oftentimes. Um, explaining about how to produce good sound and good tone and really singing tone uh, with, the, with the piano. Uh, so when I was practicing, I didn't know what to do, but, uh, you know, how to, what to work on, and I, I, I just had no idea. Um, so after, after a few years and playing lots of chamber music, then I, uh, things opened up uh, to uh, how to make music um, then I was a little bit better. So with the education that I had in the U.S., I would say would be somewhat more evokes your imagination. I, 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 it, it makes you, I think, they open up your ideas to many different ways. Then when I went to study with uh, Professor Gutzke, uh, I thought I was looking at the, the score very closely and, and with every detail possibly, but I was not. Um, and I, I think he helped me uh, look at all these details more uh, uh, with, I wouldn't say the right way, but uh, more, much closer to what the composer had intended. Mm -hmm. And also structure-wise, I would have lots of different ideas, but it will, it felt a little bit kind of scattered and not coherent. So, so having more constructive um, idea and putting things in an order, I think that's what I learned um, in Germany. But it's, it's difficult to describe. Um, but every teacher was very unique and very personal, and I would not be uh, who I am without them, and I'm, I'm, I still have a close relationship and close touch with um, all of them. You know, it's been interesting for me because, of course, as a Korean person, I um, have been exposed to the Korean music education system, even though I personally haven't gone through it very closely, but it's something I hear about and I see from friends and colleagues. And then as I got older and as an adult now, I get to see it from a different perspective because especially over the past year during the pandemic, I got a chance to work with young students, young musicians here um, as a teacher, as a mentor. Mm -hmm. And so I'm getting a different angle of it than I did when I was a child. And yeah, it was a very eye-opening experience for me and I, always knew that it was a very different kind of system from what I know in the U.S. or in Europe. But it was, it was at times a little bit hard for me because I would see students with so much talent and so much desire and really just smart and intelligent students. And they would share their frustrations with yeah, with the education they were receiving in Korea. And um, I noticed that a lot of students have really great ideas and they are able to think for themselves, but are often limited by the system here or by their teachers. Um, there's not so much dialogue, like free dialogue, um, in a kind of equal respect <laughs> manner. Um, and, and some students feel a little nervous right. speaking out their mm -hmm. ideas and, yes. and sharing, or even if they're asked, they, they just keep it quiet. Right. And, and so I see that there's not a lot of communication about ideas going on. And also, I mean, I, I acknowledge that there is an immense pressure here and it is very competitive. Um, and so I see a lot of people trying to 
try to find success in the fastest way possible and in the most correct way possible. I mean, I, I think you also experienced this to some extent before you went to the U.S. What was your experience in this, in that kind of circumstance? So I also went to this um, fam famous school, Ye Yewon School, uh, which is a middle school mm -hmm. for a uh, specialized school for music, uh, ballet and art. So yes, uh, the life as a, as a musician, a pianist, uh, growing up, I, I, it, I, it was quite competitive, and still, it, it, I mean, it's very competitive. I, I mean, life is competitive. <laughs> um, but the the fact that you have this exam, uh, I think, twice a year. And they, it's it's quite cruel that they uh, rank from uh, there are sixty people I think pianists mm -hmm. and from number one to sixty they rank them and uh, yeah it's it's quite um, I I don't know how I survived <laughs> but um, I, I, I at least for me I loved mus music and playing the piano so when I um, have exams I will be I, w I would have to play certain music. But then, besides that, I would also buy other scores and try to learn new music and explore. And I think once my mom told me that I, she was a little worried that um, I'm playing, I'm learning d new music, and, and she, th she felt like I'm not really focusing on mm. the things right. I, have, uh, pl I have to play for the, the exam. Mm. Um, but, I, but I didn't care <laughs> much. I, had to do what I had, to, what I wanted to do, um, but I think by doing that, it, it, for me, I could expand my uh, repertoire um, and also inc uh, improve my sight reading skill. Um, so, I think as long as you are not only looking at little small things it's it's nice to have short term goals of course but it that should not be the the only ultimate main goal and i i remember i was i cried i had uh, in front of uh, an air conditioner when i uh, didn't rank rank the top first <laughs> um and I, I think i was 13 or 14 but that's you know that's not the end of the life and of course it feels like the end of the life at that age but it's not and there's so much more to it uh, um, coming up and uh, yeah as long as you keep your feelings fresh and and keep your passion going then i think that's all that matters um, but do you think that ranking system makes sense for art that's a difficult question for some certain motivation I think yes but no not so much uh, for me I if I have to be really competitive with others um, I, I think I'm a quite competitive person and so that that also motivates me quite much uh, quite a lot so I would say yes but it's not no it's not good it's not it's quite cruel right. but also that's that's life in a way they they don't rank you with the numbers, but you know they people rank people, and it's that's yeah. Because I feel like, of course, you know we are all competitive to some extent, and I think having that external driving force can be incredibly beneficial to us as developing artists. But I think, especially in a school. That's your should be your kind of safe space to learn <laughs> and yes. to to develop your craft, um, and then you know if you want to go to a competition, that is your own free will yes. and choice to put yourself in that kind of environment. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think in a especially in a music school, school to where have it, it, yeah, yeah it's, it's an institute for art and creation. Um, yeah, I think that was a surprising aspect for me. When you study to become a musician, I feel like the lessons are very much instrument focused. And of course, you want to 
be an expert in your technical abilities and in all the theory and knowledge and the practice of mastering your instrument. But I think to be a, a complete musician, there are so many aspects that go beyond your physical playing. I think your mental health and emotional well-being play a huge part in communicating um, an artistic message. That's also something I experienced later in my music education where my teachers focused of course on my playing but also on just me as a human being and acknowledge difficulties that I might be going in my personal life but that they could see it goes into my music and I just feel like learning about that kind of aspect and being learning to be in touch with yourself um, your health your well-being I think that's hugely important and I wish that was um, discussed more So you said, um, there will be times when I will be tired, emotionally drained. Musically, I will try not to fall into habit and not lose my love and passion for music. I will try to continue to have this feeling I have today. That is my small dream and wish. So that's a really beautiful quote oh, by thank you. you. <laughs> no, it's, it's really, yeah, because that's my <laughs> only hope and yeah. still my dream. Um, because concert life, being a concert musician, it's, you know, we live the life that's uncertain somehow. And even though we have, we can plan things, uh, you know, for the next few years, but also that doesn't mean, you know, you don't know what you're going to be doing in 10 years. But also at the same time, you don't know when, I, I don't know when I'm going to die. Um, but at least, as I said, before I did the playing um, the music and 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 this classical music when I ex play in public I that's the only thing that gives me such joy but at the same time it also gives me uh, such hardships but the only thing that really fills up the heart so I, I that's it's it's a big dream I would say like, one can say it's a small dream uh, but it's a it's a big dream and, and only my only wish is well thank you so much for being here today and for sharing thank you. your <laughs> stories and insights and uh, yeah I look forward to our concert together yeah soon. very much looking forward <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs>